All right, this is fourth grade, module four, lesson five. And in this lesson, we're going to be using a protractor to understand um, that angles are measured with degrees and that each degree represents one three hundred sixtieth of a turn. And what's different about this lesson is that they're going to be asking us to use a circular protractor instead of one of those traditional protractors that kind of looks like the letter D. Instead of using the traditional one, we're going to be using a circular protractor. And uh, I'm going to be comparing and contrasting the two, even though Engage New York only says that we're going to be using at this lesson the circular protractor. Ultimately, we're going to be using the normal traditional protractor, but I thought today uh, I'll compare and contrast the two. So we're going to begin, though, by understanding what is a degree in the first place, okay? And we know that one degree, oops, uh, there we go, one degree is going to represent one three hundred sixtieth of a turn, all right? So the idea would be a complete turn all the way around would be 360 degrees, and a lot of students understand that uh, right from the get-go, that 360 degrees is a complete turn, but you don't have to have them just trust you on that. What you can do is say, well, let's start by drawing a couple of line segments that look like that. And what do we have now? We have some perpendicular lines. So we have this and this are perpendicular, that means each one of these is a 90 degree angle. So let me label one of these, and I'm going to say, okay, that's a 90 degree angle, and then 90 times 4 is 360 degrees. So a complete turn, a complete rotation, is 360 degrees. And each degree represents one 360th of a turn, all right? So a quarter turn would be starting here and going up to here, Half a turn would be going starting from here and going all the way over to here. That's 180 degrees because we did 90 plus 90. And if we wanted to go all the way around, that's going to be 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90. So that's 360 degrees. So now we can actually kind of make our own protractor if we wanted to. So we know that each one of these wedges is 90 degrees. So if I wanted to, I could take this wedge right here, and I can estimate, and I won't be perfect, and that's okay. And I'm going to cut it into three pieces, and what did I just do? I just turned each one of these into 30 degrees, because I did a 90 degrees and cut it into three equal pieces. If I wanted to, I could go over here, this is also 90 degrees, and I can cut it directly in half. Boom, well, that's not exactly half, but pretty darn close. And what did I just do? Well, I just created two 45 degree angles. Now, if I wanted to, I can take one of these 45 degree angles, and I can cut it into three pieces. One, two, and 45 degrees divided by 3, that gives us 15. So I can squeeze this in and call this, whoa, and call this 15 degrees, this 15 degrees, and this 15 degrees. So we're kind of making our own protractor here. It's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty good. Now, if I wanted to, I can go to my, my 30 degrees. And let's see if I can do this. I can take my 30 degrees, and if I wanted to, let's zoom in on this 30 degrees here. And I can erase this 30, but I'm not going to be able to erase it, so I'm just going to take it, and I'm going to cut it into three equal pieces. One, and two, three. There. So now what did I just do? Well, I just created each one of these is 10 degrees. So you can see, and I'm going to label this 10 degrees, and now I'm going to zoom out, and you can see that a degree, one degree, 
is very, very tiny. If I'm already struggling uh, with trying to draw uh, 10 degrees here. In fact, if you look at it, 10 degrees and 15 degrees, the way I've drawn it so far, boy, they look very similar. That's because even 5 degrees um, is a very small amount. Anyway, so this is how we can uh, begin the process of trying to estimate uh, what a protractor would look like. We start with 90 degrees and we can cut them and subdivide them into uh, smaller wedges. So this right here is 15 degrees. That's amazing to me. Well, let's get going. So what I've got here is I've got uh, an angle. It's kind of right here, sitting right here. And then I've got a couple of different protractors. I've got the circular protractor here, and then this is a traditional protractor here. And um, even with the traditional protractors, there's a bunch of different kinds of protractors, but they're all basically used the exact same way. And I'm going to put this traditional one aside for a second, and I'm going to grab this circular protractor. And what's really cool about my circular protractor is I can make it big and I can make it small. Okay? Now, if it's too small, we can't read it. But here's the neat thing is unlike a ruler, like if you stretch out a ruler, all of a sudden you're no longer measuring inches. Or if you shrink down a ruler, it's, you're no longer measuring inches. The neat thing about a protractor is no matter how big or small your protractor is, you're still going to measure the correct angle. So here's the idea. You take this protractor and you'll notice that this protractor has a centerpiece, a point. I call that the target. And then it's got a zero degree somewhere. Even the traditional protractor, and I'm going to get this, the traditional protractor has a target. Here it is, here's the target, and here's the zero. So that's going to be common on every protractor. You're going to always have a target, and you're always going to have a zero somewhere. All right, so let me get the circular protractor. And the idea is you put the target right here on the vertex of the angle, on the corner of the angle, and, and then you rotate your protractor so that zero lines up with one of the legs of the angle. Boom. Pretty close, right there. So now I can zoom in and I can see there that my angle starts here at zero and it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That looks about to be exactly 75 degrees. So I can measure that and that says, all right, it's 75 degrees. Now the cool thing is, if I shrunk my angle down, all right, so we now know that the answer is 75 degrees, but if I shrunk my angle down, my protractor, I mean, and I measure that right there, now you can see that the angle, and I'm going to have to zoom in, even though I shrunk my protractor, I still get the exact same measurement of my angle reading. So I'm going to start here at 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75. So both times, whether I used the big protractor or the small protractor, in both cases I got 75 degrees. And uh, that's kind of the neat thing to me about the protractors, is that the protractors, it doesn't matter whether uh, some people are using a big protractor and other people are using a small protractor. Um, what, no matter what, whether you're using a big protractor or a small protractor, you're always going to get the exact same measurement, assuming you do two things. One, you put that target directly on the vertex, the corner, and you line up your protractor so that the zero, which right now is right here, so that the zero lines up on one of the legs of the angle. So we're going to practice this with a couple of measurements, a couple of angles, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit because it's a little on the small side. So here's our first one, and uh, this arc 
down here is telling us this is the angle that we're supposed to be measuring. So we're supposed to be measuring from here up to here. All right. And so when we do that, we're going to start, and they've already noticed that they've already put the target right on the vertex, right on the corner of the angle, and they've already lined it up on zero. See, there's the zero. So now all we have to do is count the degrees, and I'm going to count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So this appears to be about 60 degrees. Now, folks, angles are so small. <laughs> if you get, like, 61, but the real answer is 60, that's okay. As long as you're within a couple of degrees of the answer, you're okay. Now, if you're off by, like, 15 degrees, then you're in trouble. <laughs> but uh, those angles are so degrees. I mean, those tiny little degrees are so small. So if you're off by a couple, that's all right. Let's do one more right here. Now you can see this one is a big old huge obtuse angle because it's bigger than 90 degrees. So it's a big old huge obtuse angle, um, which means when we get our answer, it better be larger than 90. And they've already lined everything up, so we're going to start here at 0 and count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130. Looks like this is about 130 degrees. And that is Grade 4, Module 4, Lesson 5, using a special protractor called a circular protractor to really understand how to measure angles and really in particular understand that one degree is equal to 100, well, I mean one three hundred sixtieths of a turn.